Today I'm going to review the MRI of the brain and spine of a 25-year-old male with multiple sclerosis. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about the normal anatomy, the findings that are consistent with multiple sclerosis, and stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll talk about this particular scan. Now I should say that this is not my patient. These images are readily available on radiopedia.org and I'll post a link so you could look at them yourself in the comments below. So the way MRI works in general is that you put the part of the body in a giant magnet and it causes the hydrogen atoms to line up and then a radio frequency pulse disturbs them and as they relax that information is detected by a receptor and there's sort of, sort of sort of different forms of relaxation called T1 and T2 and they make up different sequences of the MRI and then there are different things we can do with the computer to produce different types of images and so basically the water and fat molecules that contain hydrogen, their properties are very slightly affected by the surrounding tissue, and that causes different signal on the MRI scan. So the image you're looking at is a T2 axial scan of the brain. And so if you look at a picture of me on the side, they're kind of slices like this through the brain. And just to point out a little anatomy, these are the ears here, and these are the eyes and the optic nerves here. And these are the air-filled sinuses in the brain. This is the sphenoid sinus. These are the temporal lobes of the brain. Uh, this is the middle ear, and you can sort of see the semicircular canals that control balance. This is the brain stem. This is the pons and the cerebellum. And this is the uh, parotid gland, one of the salivary glands. We're very low here, so this is sort of the top of the spinal cord. Uh, this is the nose and nasal septum, and you can see there's a little bit of a de de deviated nasal septum, which is very common. And on the T2 scan, the white matter appears dark, and the cortex, or the surface of the brain with the cells, appears bright. And so you can see the deep gray nuclei, the caudate, and the putamen here, for instance. And just to point out a little bit of anatomy, these are the internal carotid arteries coming into the brain. This is the pituitary gland. This is the basilar artery. And if you look at it, you can see uh, these, these are the optic nerves and the optic chiasm and the optic tracts. These are the middle cerebral arteries. For instance, this is the midbrain. These are the posterior cerebral arteries. Just to point out a few things, this is the superior sagittal sinus, one of the major veins in the brain. And you can see these white matter lesions, which are highly consistent with multiple sclerosis. So this is sort of the picture that you would show to a medical student or a junior resident to show them what MS is supposed to look like. Of course, there are a lot of a variation from person to person. Not everyone had classic, classic findings, but this is like sort of a textbook MRI of someone with MS. And I don't know anything about this individual. We know it's a 25-year-old male. I don't know anything about the symptoms or if it's a new diagnosis or if this individual is being treated with medication. Now, I don't, I don't know the symptoms, but believe it or not, with this MRI, this man could easily be a marathon runner and a CEO with five kids and have virtually no symptoms. Now, probably he has some symptoms based on some active lesions in the spinal cord, which I'll show you a little bit, but surprisingly, he may have relatively few symptoms. But you can see these lesions in the middle cerebellar peduncle. These could be associated with tremor and clumsiness. You can see all these spots in the cerebellum, which could be related to imbalance. But the thing about multiple sclerosis is we may, may not be looking at permanent tissue damage. We could be looking at lesions that have demyelination and remyelination. So they're functioning fairly well, despite that they look very abnormal on the MRI. We see a lot of lesions in the paraventricular area. These are Dawson's fingers. Uh, we see lesions in the subcortical white matter. We see some lesions right next to the cortex called juxtacortical lesions. These are all classic MS lesions. Now we'll look at uh, some other sequences. So these are sagittal images. So we're sort of looking at slices through the brain like this. So this is the eye. These are sort of the extraocular muscles. Uh, for instance, this is the lateral rectus that moves the left eye to the left. You can see the teeth here. You can see the cerebellum in the back of the brain. You can see the brain stem and spinal cord. So this is the, the corpus callosum, which is the white matter tract that uh, connects the two halves of the brain. You can see there's some lesions in the corpus callosum. Lesions here often don't cause major symptoms, although the corpus callosum is thought to be related to integrating multiple functions in the brain and people with a lot of 
corpus callosum damage and atrophy can have a lot of difficulty with certain aspects of cognitive function and multitasking. And you can see some of these other subcortical white matter lesions. So when the lesions are sort of lined up like this, they call it a white picket fence sign, which is a classic sign of multiple sclerosis. Now here we can see the images with contrast. So this is a T1 image with gadolinium dye. And here you can see that a lot of the lesions take up the dye. So you can see all these spots. Uh, so this man has numerous contrast enhancing lesions. And uh, you can see this one in the cerebellum, for instance, with a lot of enhancing lesions. Now I won't talk too much about these other sequences, but ADC and DWI are used mostly for diagnosing acute stroke, but a lot of MS lesions can be a little bit diffusion restricting if they're active. But now we'll move on to the spine. So this is a T2 sagittal image of the cervical spine. And so you can see the bones, the vertebrae. This is C2 and C1. These are the discs in between the vertebrae. And the spinal cord is normally dark on T2, but you can see these bright areas, which are the multiple sclerosis lesions. And there's this normal brightness or cerebrospinal fluid, the type of fluid we're extracting during a spinal tap around the spinal cord. And you can see the medulla and the pons and the midbrain and the cerebellum. And you can see these sort of short lesions that are scattered in different areas in multiple sclerosis. They tend to be mostly towards the back of the cord, but they can also be in different aspects of the cord. And if you look at it from the side, let's see if I can find the axial image of the spine, we'll be able to see exactly where these lesions are. Um, so here, this is a, an axial T1 scan with, with contrast dye. And so you can see this is an enhancing lesion on the left side of the spinal cord. And so this could cause numbness and weakness of the left side of the body. It turns out that the more of the sensory fibers involved in vibration and fine touch are more towards the back. The motor fibers and the fibers involved in pinprick and temperature sensation are more towards the outside or lateral part of the spinal cord. And in the front are the motor neurons. And so this person could have weakness and numbness on the left side of the body. And let's see if I can move to different areas. There's a kind of a central lesion and then another left-sided lesion. So this person probably doesn't have no symptoms, but could have relatively few symptoms. And we can sort of look at the sagittal T1 images with contrast. So you can see this active lesion here and a few more active lesions down here. Uh, so, you know, hopefully this was instructive for you guys. If you have any questions, please post in the comments below. I think that, um, you know, one thing to mention is that this is quite a large number of active lesions. So this individual is probably newly diagnosed or not on treatment or at least not on highly effective treatment. Uh, but if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post in the comments below.